What's up guys, I'm Michael, and today I'm gonna to decide if the Switch Pro Controller is worth it in 2020. And my first thoughts are, uh... The Switch Pro Controller came out at the exact same time as the Nintendo Switch did back in 2017 except that was a product that you had to buy separately. It was $70, um, and I just got mine used, and it was only 60 Otherwise, you are getting this guy right here, which is a great controller. Let me start out by saying that I just got this controller maybe two months ago. So all of my gaming on the Nintendo Switch has been based off of the Joy-Cons and using that controller. And truth be told, I love it. I think it's a good controller. I never had any problems with it besides maybe the occasional Joy-Con drift, but it's it's been a great product um, The handles on it work great. You know, there's it, it is a little bit longer than what you normally would But all the buttons are where it would be used to the only thing that I really had to get used to was the A and B and the X and Y being inverted from like an Xbox or a PlayStation which yes, I know they have symbols you get what I'm going for but really other than that that was something that's on the pro controller too one thing that I really liked about the joy-con controller was that you could take these guys off and they were separate controllers for certain games um, Pokemon Go for instance I mean you're only using half of this so if you wanted to do a little co-op slide the other one out and there you go you got two people so basically when you buy the Nintendo switch you're already getting two-player compatibility there's no other game console that you're gonna do that without maybe paying extra for. That's huge, I like that. That being said, this is not about the Joy-Con. This is about the Pro Controller. So you don't care what I think about the Joy-Con. So right now we're gonna talk all about the Pro Controller and what I think. And truth be told, this is much more of a traditional controller. It looks and feels more like something that you've been used to. A lot of people liken it to the Xbox 360 controller. I personally think it's more like the Xbox One controller. I'm, it's apples and oranges, they're similar, you know, and then no, one, no one's gonna fight on that. So, I mean, I, I totally get it. I like it, the button placeability is good. So right off the bat, a couple differences between this and this. You got a dedicated D-pad as opposed to just, well, this is, it's a D-pad, but it's different. It's just a couple arrows. Um, the joysticks feel much more smooth, much easier than this. Um, this seems like it just has a really limited range of motion where the Pro Controller, it really doesn't. Um, it still has the Amiibo support, so you take any of your Amiibos, you put it right right on top of that. It's got every button in there uh, and, and in the spots that it would be normally. It feels better in the hands, to be completely honest, than, than the Joy-Con controller. I don't know, what is this, the controller Joy-Con dock? I, that, I made that up, I know that's not it, so please be nice to me, I know that's not what it's called. But this is a really long controller, you know? It, 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 it looks like something that was just kind of slapped together, whereas this is much more playable. Now the biggest part that I can really sell you on for this, no Joy-Con drift. That's very annoying for people who have experienced it if you haven't consider yourself lucky. Also another big thing with this is the battery life. I can noticeably tell a big difference. Not that the Joy-Con controller has bad battery life. I feel like I've charged this like twice ever. It's probably been more than that, but I really feel like I go very long in between charges, which is awesome. So you're able to play a lot and it's great. And there's still motion controls on it, which is nice. So in a game kind of like a Zelda, you know, where you're walking through the shrines and well, running, no one actually walks in that game, but you're going through the shrines and trying to figure things out. Everything's on there. It's good, you know, it, it, it's, it feels the same and natural to me. So there's really no problems there. I mean, listen, all in all, it's a great controller. I'm not gonna sit here and say like it has bad things. My big debate is, is it worth the money? It's $70 to buy a controller. Now it's also $70 to buy a Joy-Con too, but you're also essentially getting two controllers for one. Now listen, I'm not gonna sit here and talk like the Joy-Con and using half of a Joy-Con is a replacement for a full controller. It sucks. 
I have bigger hands. Um, I mean, it, it, it feels terrible in it, you know? So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that that is way better. But for $70, you get that, which can also clip on the sides for on-the-go gaming. Listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing. If you bust one of these guys out on an on-the-go gaming session when you're on the subway, the amount of crazy looks you're about to get, just don't do it, trust me. So currently, right now, there's four colorways for this. You know which doesn't really affect performance but just different cool ones you know they got the splatoon um there is the super smash brothers there's this one which is the i guess what do you you could see the guts of the controller that is a disgusting word so i mean essentially you are going to get more customization options with the joy cons so overall you really can't go wrong with the customization features because one cool thing about the switch is you are able to get the different colors by using the Joy-Cons. Um, and that's something that you wouldn't get with using a controller. Again, who really cares about that? I mean, you're, you're, I'm buying it for the game. I mean, okay, a little bit for the looks, but mostly the game. Also, one thing to keep in mind is not every game supports the Pro Controller. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go, for instance, you have to use the, the Joy-Cons. So when you're gonna get into that situation, you might have just spent money on this controller and it's it's useless. So again, I'm gonna to get to the real point of it. Is it worth it? Is it a good controller? Is it great? Yes, absolutely. I mean, just using it, that is what I do. I feel like I'm part of the minority in playing the games and the Switch mostly in docked mode. Um, but a lot of people play it portable. If you're gonna play it portable, the pro controller is going to be useless for you i mean even when i do play i've like i said the first couple of years the first three years when i've owned the switch all i was playing on was this and i'm telling you it was fine i didn't have any problems with it yeah maybe it's a little bit different shape than another controller but who cares it's a shape it still felt fine everything worked it did exactly what i needed to i had no problems with it now listen if i was playing a game and you ditch this and you have to just play like this the whole time and there was no dock for the joy cons yeah it would be terrible i'd say as fast as you can get out and get a controller unless you hate your life but other than that i mean there's not a big difference with them and it's hard for me to justify the $70 brand new 60 if you did in my case and get a refurbished or a used one it, it just doesn't have enough features. It doesn't change the gaming experience enough for me to say, yes, absolutely go out. The people I would recommend it to, first off, if you really, really only play it in docked mode, then you could be a candidate for it. Let's say you needed to go out and get another controller. Maybe your controller broke, or maybe you have an annoying brother or sister that wanna play with you then you have to get another controller. I'd absolutely suggest go out and get it. It's a, it's a good controller, it's great. You won't be sorry with it. You know, it, 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 it's not gonna lead you wrong. It will feel a little bit better than the Joy-Cons. But if you're not in that kind of situation and you're just looking maybe to upgrade, sure, it's an upgrade, but if you got disposable income, I don't know, I could think of other ways to buy and, and spend that money so truthfully i i really don't i don't think it is so what i really want to say it's a great controller great controller is it worth 70 dollars not even a little bit so how i'm gonna finish this off i don't know am i gonna give no, i'm not even gonna give it a rating because it's a great controller performance wise and it, it hits everything that's not what this is about do i think it's worth it not really. I don't think it is. I think that truthfully you could spend your money on a brand new game instead of a controller that you really don't need. You know, this is just, this is my two cents. This is my opinion. Feel free to tell me I'm wrong. I'm an idiot. I don't know. I just, listen, if you're not good at video games, I don't think buying this controller is going to change it. And if you are good, it's really not going to change it either. So it's completely up to you. Um, but if you're really looking for a recommendation, Great controller, not worth the money. If you need a second one, absolutely get it over the Joy-Con. It's different and it feels more comfortable than most of the systems I'm sure you're used to. And you really can't go wrong with it. Well, I hope you guys appreciated my insight and two cents into this topic. Hopefully it helps you. If not, sorry for wasting your time. 
Um, thankfully, I didn't charge you to watch this, so you're good. But until next time, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.